Welcome to my lecture online. Our next topic with virtual work is the concept of mechanical efficiency. And mechanical efficiency is defined as the work output divided by the work input. And of course, you always want to have the maximum efficiency possible. So if the work output equals the amount of work input, then of course you have 100% efficiency. In the real world, that will never happen. So how do we calculate the efficiency in a particular situation? Well, here we have an example that we're not familiar with. We're going to do some virtual work. There's going to be a force pushing down here, which is going to push this block to the right. And then there's an opposing force pushing back. We have the normal force right here, but the normal force is not going to do any work because the direction of motion is perpendicular to the force right here. And these two forces, the X and the Y component on the left side here, are also not doing work because there's no motion. So the only two forces doing work is the force pushing down at the top and the force pushing back right here. So we're going to calculate the amount of work done through an infinitesimally small motion that's called virtual work. And we have that defined as being the sum of all the forces times all the displacements. Of course, remember that it's the magnitude of force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement. We also need to define the initial height here. We started with the initial distance between these two points and then the change in those. So the initial distance y, we take the length of one of these beams, which is equal to L, times the cosine of the angle because it's adjacent to the angle. So this becomes L times the cosine of theta. And the distance here, well, that would be L times the sine of theta, which is this distance, times 2, because we have two of the beams. So this would be 2 L times the sine of theta. So the change then, notice the angle changes through an angle d theta here, and that gives us a small change in the y, which means that dy will be the differential of L cosine theta, which is minus L times the sine of theta times d theta. Put a line here so we don't get confused. And now for dx, we take the derivative of this, which would be 2L times the cosine of theta times d theta. So now we can go ahead and figure out the efficiency because now we have our dx and our dy which are defined here but now we also need to find the relationship between r and f. And we'll do that the way we did before using virtual work. So we're going to sum the two pieces of work together so we have f times dy times the cosine of the angle between the two directions. Now the force is pushing down and so is the displacement down so the angle between the direction of the force and displacement is zero so we get the cosine of zero degrees. Then we have plus the force right here which is R times the displacement which is dx times the cosine of the angle between them. But now see that the r is pushing in this direction and the displacement is in the opposite direction. So this is the cosine of 180 degrees and together that should add up to zero. Of course the cosine of 180 is a negative one so this becomes f times dy minus r times dx equals zero and now we have to define dy and dx. Well we have that right here. So that gives us the magnitude of dy so f times the magnitude of dy, which is L sine of theta d theta minus R times the magnitude of dx, which is 2L times the cosine of theta d theta. And together, that adds up to zero. Now, take a look at this equation. We can factor out an L, and of course, since it's equal to zero, we simply can eliminate L by dividing both sides by L. We can divide both sides by d theta, which means that the equation now becomes f times the sine of theta, when we bring this to the other side, is equal to 2r times the cosine of theta. And so that means that r is equal to 1 half f times the sine divided by cosine, which is the tangent of theta. So here we have now a relationship between the reaction force r and the initial force F. So now let's go ahead and plug that into our efficiency equation to see what the efficiency is in this case. Now notice we have mu is equal to zero. 
which means there's no friction forces involved, and so there's not part of our equation here when we're calculating the virtual work. So to calculate the efficiency of this action here, we can then replace r by what r is equal to, which is one half f times the tangent of theta times the magnitude of dx, which is right here, 2L cosine of theta d theta, times 2L cosine of theta d theta, and divide the whole thing by f times dy, f and dy, the magnitude of that is L sine of theta d theta, L sine of theta d theta. All right. Now we have some fun because we can simplify things. We have an L in the denominator, an L in the numerator. We have a one half times two. We have an F and an F. We have a tangent of theta. Oh, here we have a d theta and d theta. We have a tangent of theta and a cotangent of theta because the cosine divided by sine is a cotangent and the tangent times the cotangent is one. So all this cancels out and we're simply left with one divided by one in other words, this is equal to 1, which is 100%. The efficiency of this action is 100%, which means the amount of work that we get out is equal to the amount of work we put in, therefore 100% efficient. Now, we did this to show you an example of how it's calculated, and we did it in the case that the coefficient of friction is equal to 0, an unlikely scenario, of course. So now let's do this again. We'll introduce a coefficient of friction to see how this calculation will change. Well, again, we'll then calculate the mechanical efficiency, and it'll probably be less than 100%. But this is how it's done, and this is how mechanical energy, and or I should say the mechanical efficiency, is defined.